Hello, in this session I will talk about selecting distinct records. This is Hassan Mir from 02protraining.com. I am connected to SAP HANA Studio. In the previous session we have created a sub-query that is retrieving all the names of the students who are taking any course. And we have course student student underscore course and team tables created in previous sessions. A student table contains records of all the students and a student underscore course table contains all the records of the relationships between a student and courses. In other words, which student is taking which course. This information resides in this table. So on the screen you can see the subquery that we created in the previous session. We are selecting first name of those students where ID is one of these IDs and what are one of these IDs? That is another SQL and that is we are selecting IDs, student IDs from student underscore course table. So selecting student ID from student underscore course table is giving you the IDs of all those students who are taking any course. And the top query, the outer query is selecting first names of those students where ID belongs to one of the IDs retrieved by the in inner query. So this way of handling the queries is called a subquery method. We can achieve the same result using joints as well and we have studied joints in previous sessions so I will not go into details here. I will simply write a select statement that will give me the same result using join method. So in join method you put all the table names in the from clause that are taking part in the action. So the from clause will include both tables student and student underscore course. Now good practice is to give aliases to these tables so that you can use the aliases to prefix the column names rather than the full table names if need be. We don't have a conflicting columns but it's a good practice. Conflicting column meaning a column that resides in both the tables then system needs to know you're talking about column from which table. So now we need to specify a join condition. You can write inner join using ex implicit or explicit method. I have covered both in my videos. I'm going to use implicit method here. And the joining condition is where ID column of student table is equal to student ID column of student underscore course table. So I'm using B as a shortcut rather than giving the full table name here. Now what do I need to select? My from clause is complete, my where clause is okay now it has a joining condition and I only want to see first names from student table. Again like first name only exists in student table so a dot was not really required but it's a good practice. So I'm going to run this statement now and I should get the name of students who are taking any course. But we have a problem here. It's giving me the result but it's not like 100% okay result because I'm seeing Hassan twice. Why I'm seeing Hassan twice? Because if I take a look at the data in student underscore course table by right clicking on the table and choosing open content this will show me that student one is taking more than one course he's taking two courses so if this student would be taking ten courses then you would see his name ten times in the result and that's not what we were uh, we want to see actually if necessary you should go back and revise the join lesson if uh, you're not sure why Hassan is coming twice here because join is based on a Cartesian product. Two tables are joined and uh, in the Cartesian product 001 or the ID of the student will be repeated as many times as many courses that person is taking. As pointed out in the previous session joins are much faster in performance as compared to subqueries. Subqueries are fine if tables are small but if you are dealing with large data then consider writing a join. Now how would I modify this query so that system gives me only unique records? It's pretty simple. We have a keyword for that purpose called distinct and it's added just after the select keyword. 
what it does is in the final output only once the output is prepared for you to be sent to the screen system scans and remove the duplications so you only see unique records on the screen in final output so if I run this query again I will only see one student listed only once here and that is the whole purpose of the distinct now both the SQLs are giving you exactly the same result if I rerun the top one it will give me the exact result now keep in mind that distinct keyword is not required in the subquery because the nature of its logic is very different than how joint works and I've covered that in the previous session now we have an error let me just quickly take a look at the error okay we have a typo here E is missing so if I rerun this query okay so you see exactly the same result that you saw from the join